is extraordinarily important work. I think the value of our discussion here is if it gets you interested enough to read Maseros for yourself and maybe to look for these answers in it. I think that he has not he has not received uh, enough recognition in the English speaking world. His his books in Latin America, you know, are are um, have been translated and written in English, but translated and sold in the hundreds of thousands, even millions, and uh, and in in the left in in the United States and um, in the in the English speaking world, his work is hardly known. I think that that has to change. I think this is the the um, most provocative work in Marxist theory, certainly related to the state, but also. Um, in terms of going beyond capital that we have, and we should be studying it and discussing it. And uh, I'm I'm excited that this seems to be happening finally. And uh, I only wish it, it had happened while he was still alive. Hello and welcome. I'm Lynn Fries, producer of Global Political Economy, or GPE News Docs. That opening clip was from a monthly review press conversation with John Bellamy Foster. He was discussing Beyond Leviathan, Critique of the State by Esteban Mizarros. This was in a conversation marking the book's publication in 2022. For the benefit of those of us who for one reason or another didn't know about or find time to listen to this long form conversation, or who, like me, need repeated views for this kind of content to finally sink in. This segment presents some of John Bellamy Foster's comments in the short form video format. John Bellamy Foster is professor of sociology at the University of Oregon and editor of Monthly Review. Monthly Review's 75th anniversary issue was published in May 2024. In that edition, John Bellamy Foster revisited the legacy of Albert Einstein and his deep connections to Monthly Review. In its first edition in May 1949, Monthly Review published Albert Einstein's article, Why Socialism? What perhaps is less well known is the connection between Istvan Mezaros and Monthly Review. As leading publishers of left scholarship, Monthly Review Magazine and Monthly Review Press have long been committed to publishing Esteban Mizarro's work. Mizarro's critique of the state was left unfinished at the time of his death and posthumously edited by John Bellamy Foster. He also wrote the book's introduction. In this opening set of comments, John Bellamy Foster talks about the basic premise of Beyond Leviathan. If you read Beyond Leviathan, you won't find any references uh, at all uh, to um, the Marxist debates on the state in the 1960s and 1970s, most uh, famously associated with the, the uh, debate between Ralph Miliband and Nikos Palancis and all of the other contributions. None of those uh, approaches, um, none of those discussions enter in to his analysis at all, although he's um, closest uh, to Miliband's perspective, basically those debates on the state uh, were irrelevant or, or, or certainly not fundamental from his point of view, and they don't constitute uh, a Marxist theory of the state. Uh, they're, they were really the result of attempts within Euro communism and and uh, and the Labour Party in Britain to uh, figure out how socialists could come take advantage of the relative autonomy of the state, um, come to power, basically share power uh, uh, with um, elements of capital within the state, and um, and sort of reconfigure radically reform. Uh, capitalist society or the capitalist state, and uh, none of this uh, is is central for Maseros. Uh, he he starts off with um, basically Norberto uh, Bobbio's uh, notion that there is no Marxist theory of the state, and uh, he also quotes you know Althusser and uh, 
and uh, uh, Coletti on that. And the reason, the reason this is so important is that um, the, um, the classical Marxist theory of the state uh, that came out of Marx himself with the critique of the Gotha program and uh, with his writings on, on the Paris uh, Commune and in, in, um, in uh, Lenin's state and revolution, it was all about the withering away of the state or how the state will wither away. And the, the problem for Marxist theory at that time classically was, was the eradication of the state. Basically, Maseros's position, Maseros's own position, is you can't transcend capital and you can't transcend labor without transcending the state as it emerged in history. But he doesn't take this um, from the standpoint of, well, then we'll just look, analyze the capitalist state. He sees the state as a structure arising um, out of um, class struggle from, from um, over thousands of years. So he goes back to Plato and Aristotle, uh, Augustine, um, Machiavelli, uh, Hobbes, Hegel, all the way up, he, he uh, passes through all the major state theorists in trying to understand how the state uh, is uh, arose, uh, what are its dimensions, and how do we we transcend it? And this isn't some sort of utopian fantasy for him. It's um, the the state is um, a hierarchical system of power uh, connected to the maintenance of class society. But he recognizes that all societies have to have an overall political command structure. It's just they don't you know, have to have it in the form of the state, a hierarchical class-based uh, uh, political order. And, uh, and going deeply into how that evolved historically, its contradictions and, and um, the, the means for its transcendence is what Beyond Leviathan is all about. Now, this may seem like an enormous project, but then uh, it may seem to some to be almost irrelevant because the, the capitalist state is everywhere. But the point is that um, theoretically, you can't actually have a, a Marxist critique unless you can step outside the system uh, and Marx's critique is based on stepping out of um, the capital relation. It also involves stepping out of the alienated labor relation, but it also requires that we st uh, step out of the, the state uh, relation, which holds the system together. The modalities of capital consists of capital, labor, and the state and they reinforce each other and you have to uh, basically eradicate all three. Eradicating labor means eradicating alienated labor. And uh, you have to eradicate all three to transcend capitalism. And you have to create a new social metabolism in its place with a new uh, form of a new political command structure in order to be able to develop um, a critique a revolutionary response, response in order to be able to actually talk about how we create a society of substantive equality. And then we can fight um, the struggle on the ground as, as it is, but with this wider, more radical, more revolutionary perspective in mind, it changes strategically how we operate and um, how we conceive of a transition away from the system. So this is basically the premise of, of Beyond Leviathan. It has a lot of elements in it that, that grew out of uh, his work Beyond Capital. There are all sorts of, of concepts involved, uh, the most important being substantive equality, but um, the basic framework is how do we understand uh, the problem of transcending the state and how does that inf inform 
our, our everyday practice rather than taking the liberal uh, conception of the state, which is circular and based on a kind of lawlessness and, um, and just trying to reconfigure that, uh, that, that goes nowhere. Uh, we, we need a more revolutionary uh, theoretical critique in, in his view. The capitalist state claims to be based on law. It's, it's, it's actually very dependent on lawlessness. That is all sorts of constant exceptions uh, that uh, maintain the power that break with any rule of law. So behind the facade of law is this, this uh, realm of lawlessness. All this is also tied up with the structural crisis of capital, which provides the basis for, for um, more revolutionary approaches. This next set of comments delves into difficulties in transcending the state. And Mizarro's critique of this and his ideas of what a viable pathway to move beyond the state, so beyond the Viathon, would need to involve. One of the problems is that um, the, path, um, the path beyond the state or the path to, to uh, the withering away of the state passes through the state. So it's not it's not possible to simply to uh, simply um, say, well, the state's going to wither away. There is actually an immediate struggle over the state, and um, and uh, that struggle has has dominated the left. And if you don't have a, a long term strategic perspective, you can even um, uh, supposedly gain control of the state and um, and uh, fall into a trap um, because you end up simply reinforcing the capital relation. So uh, the two dominant strategies uh, of the left in the in the po you know in the 20th century so were of course the the uh, Soviet model, uh, which you know became actually um, a very centralized uh, state. And um, well, it didn't start out exactly like that, but be, um, and, and the other was the social democratic uh, model pursued uh, by the left in the West. And part of um, Mazeros's work is involved uh, with explaining why both of those failed. So uh, beyond capital is really a very large part of beyond capital is, is about why um, the Soviet type societies failed and the capital relation persisted um, in and uh, and in many and in many respects the labor relation um, persisted in in the Soviet Union through um, the model of a very centralized state. So the uh, he critiques that he, he also, he also, in his analysis, explains why the social democratic model collapsed and and uh, went in the direction of of um, neoliberalism. In Latin America, because of U.S. dominance, it was uh, Latin America was the the experimental region for neoliberalism, and uh, Venezuela uh, Venezuela's revolution actually was a response to that. The place where uh, Mazeros had the most impact, of course, was on, on Chavez in Venezuela, where, um, where very mu um, a large part of the Bolivarian revolution under Chavez's leadership was modeled after uh, Mazeros's ideas. So there, uh, the, the idea, at least with while Chavez was in charge, was, was Yes, for the have a a state that rep, um, that was um, subject to popular sovereignty, but also that uh, dissolved um, uh, much of the, the state power and and um, handed that over to the communities or in, and to the the communes. So it involved in, in in some ways gaining the state so that the state could be. Uh, or political command structure could be re 
restructured away from a classic state model. Beyond Leviathan has to be the goal, but to uh, institute that, uh, you have to confront the state directly and even um, in, and even gain popular sovereignty over the state in order to be able to affect the changes. Uh, so it's, it's a complex process. Even in case of Chavez and the Bolivarian Revolution, he said to Chavez, you will fail, right? Because no one country can, can uh, solve these problems. The solutions have to be global. And at the very end of Chavez's life, and uh, he and, and Mesros were working on, on trying to create a, a new, uh, a call for a new international, as they called it globally, that would, would um, try to create a global response, which is for him is necessary. Mesros doesn't believe that there's only one single path in which the state can be transformed. It does require taking a lot of the state power and passing that to the people. So the state begins to wither away while the political command structure is strengthened at the bottom of society. Um, but this is a long transition. He doesn't, he doesn't um, uh, depict a single path. The crisis of the state is actually centered in the advanced capitalist world, and uh, it's no longer able to uh, function. And we, you know, we're going to be forced to uh, transcend it. It can't solve the environmental problem. It can't solve uh, the economic problem. In and uh, it can't solve the problem of of the of. Um, World War, the the increasing dangers of uh, a thermonuclear exchange, uh, and the system becomes more and more corrupt, and um, and extends to the media system and everything else. And uh, the only possibility is is to move away from this state structure towards a different kind of political system, and it has to involve increased sovereignty from below. Well, uh, I mean, this is volume one, and volume two and three were going to be even more su substantial. Most of, he has a discussion of uh, Hobbes and Hegel, who he considers to be the two greatest modern theories of the state in Beyond Leviathan, but the bulk of his analysis of of um, Hobbes and Hegel's approaches to the state, and therefore, you know, the really deep uh, theory of the state is actually in in the second and third um, volume, um, you know, drafts, which which um, or were only they were a second draft, and not the the final draft. So, and with that, he's able to kind of go forward more and, and talk about uh, uh, how the, not only how the bourgeois state works, but, but how to uh, transcend it. So it is, you know, it, in some ways, um, this is the Beyond Leviathan is, um, it's, it's fairly complete. Um, it was, you know, some of the chapters were missing if the, of this volume we've just published and some of it had to be taken out of the notes, but it's incomplete in the sense that the second and third volumes where he was going to develop the argument are not are not there yet. So critique of Leviathan will make that available. We're going to leave it there for now. Viewers who'd like to know more about this book and conversation can find full details at monthlyreview.org, including excerpts of John Bellamy Foster's introduction and Istvan Mazzaro's preface to Beyond Leviathan. For an overview of the book's aims and scope, see John Bellamy Foster's introduction to the review of the month by Mazzaro's in the December 2017 issue of Monthly Review.